Let me recognize Senator Ernst, please. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. And General LaCamera, it is great to see you again. And thank you for your service to our nation and that of Teresa's and your families as well. Thank you for being here. Uh, it's not lost on me, certainly, if uh, those that are watching, if they could see the right sleeve of your uniform, the years of service that that represents with you serving away from your family in difficult circumstances. And all of us want to make sure that we are recognizing that sacrifice and the sacrifice of your family. So thank you. Um, through your experience and record of success, many years of success, you are superbly qualified and the right selection to lead the United States Forces Korea into the future. And I have just a few questions and I'm gonna go back and reflect on what Senator uh, Hirono was leading into as well. Um, in the strategic competition of our current security environment, the Korean Peninsula is part of a larger regional contest that encompasses all elements of national power. And in your advanced policy questions, you discuss the various relationships that exist in the region and specifically the relationship between South Korea and Japan. This is what Senator Hirono was discussing earlier. What recommendations would you provide on how to move forward with these relationships? If you could explain that a little bit more in detail. I ask, uh, Senator, and thank you for uh, recognizing my family. The, uh, the rock, uh, you know, with, uh, the military relationship is, ex is extremely important. Um, we rely, um, if, if confirmed, uh, or in my current position now as the U.S. Army Pacific Commander, um, you know, I, I talk to U.S. Forces Command Korea and, uh, and my U.S. Army Japan, uh, to make sure that you know we have the the capabilities and to uh, to, to to support General Abrams, um, and I think we need to look at other opportunities. Uh, we have the Security Force Assistance Brigade that we can send to the different locations to share uh, tactics, techniques, and procedures. We have the training national training centers um, that we can we can bring them to. Um, we are developing an Arctic strategy. I think uh, both of them have cold weather environments and high altitude that I think, you know, we could we could leverage back, um, you know, back inside uh, U.S. Army Pacific or even back in the continental United States. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that is important. Um, we we look to reassure our allies and deter those competitors. Um, so employing our, our military and demonstrating through these actions, uh, again, is, is a reassurance. Um, do you believe that through those actions um, involving our allies, other nations, is there a way that we can project to them that we are the partner of choice in the region? And who would the other partner of choice be? And why is it important they continue to come to us? Oh, yes, Senator. I, well, I think when you look at it, our adversaries, um, whether it's China, Russia, North Korea, um, Iran, the violent extremist organizations, you know, they're looking to change the international rules-based order that, quite frankly, that that we've established um, and um, helped enforce with both the Japanese and, and the Republic of Korea and other other allies mm -hmm. and par partners in the region. And I think it's. Um, what we need to continue to demonstrate is that um, our the way we do business um, is the right thing, and we need to continue to highlight our, how our adversaries uh, are not operating in those countries' best interest. Mm -hmm. um, and certainly with, with China as being one of those large regional competitors, uh, oftentimes we find that they're offering a a bunch of goods, but then when the, the allies get the bill of sale, there's a lot of strings attached uh, to what they're selling. So um, I really appreciate it. I know that um, my time is, is running out. You did mention the SFAB, um, the Security Forces Assistance Brigade. Can you talk a little bit more about, uh, just very briefly, their role in the region and how they've been able to close some of the gaps that we have had? Uh, yes, Senator. The, in, in this region, 
their interoperability has really been not not so much training because they're the the countries we work with they're the experts in this region in the environment and so we're really learning from them but it's the interoperability and it's the communication piece that allows us to uh to be effective um in a fight yeah thank you and my time has expired thank you mr chair thank you again general appreciate it thank, thank you senator ernst uh senator kelly uh 